Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we are going to give an overview of object-oriented programming using Python. First, let's understand the definition of classes and objects. What's the difference and how are they connected? So a class is essentially a blueprint. You've probably heard this sentence multiple times, but that doesn't make it any less true. A class will have a certain set of attributes and functions that all the objects will inherit. To understand this, my favorite example to look at is dog. Dogs. So think of it like this. Dogs in general are a class of animals. All of the dogs, so this class, have the same attributes and functions. So attributes or properties could be something like their hair color, their breed, their age, whether it's a male or female. So all of these are attributes that describe individual dogs. So the dog class will have these attributes. We said classes have both attributes and functions. Now, in terms of functions, what do all dogs have? All dogs can eat, all dogs sleep, all dogs drink water, all dogs run. So these are all functions of this class. So now we have the attributes and we have the functions of the class. What would the objects be in this analogy? So we said the class is just the concept of a dog. It's the blueprint. It's the concept that a dog has all of these features and it has all of these functions. Now, individual dogs. So let's say I have a dog named Max, who is a golden retriever. This is a single instance of a dog. It's an individual. It's an instance of the class. So keep this example in mind because we're going to see through the code how this would work in Python. So to create a class with Python, you need to use the class keyword. This is how we're going to define a class. Then you need to give the class a name. So in our example, the class represents dog. So we name our class dog. Then we put a colon and then we go to the next line and we indent. You can see here that I've written pass. So pass is a keyword in Python that you can use to fill in any class or function that you haven't defined yet. So basically our class is empty. We haven't yet added any attributes or functions. We've just said pass, meaning just keep this class empty for now. We'll edit it back later. All right, so we have created the class. Now, how would I go about creating an object or an instance of this class? So I'm going to name my object Max. This will represent my dog Max, who is an instance of this class. So I just say Max equal dog with two parentheses. Now, what does this mean? Here I'm saying this is the name of the class. And when I put these two brackets here, I'm basically saying this is an instance of the dog class. So here I'm creating a new instance of this dog class and I saved it inside Max. So Max now is a dog object. You know how in Python, for example, if I write this and I say this is equal to A, this means that the variable A the type of it is a Python string. So this is a string. Now, if this was two, the variable here, this is the type is int. The type is an integer. All right, now in case of max, when I say dog with two parentheses, here I'm saying that the type of max is actually a dog. So this max variable, it points to a dog. So let's clear this and actually try to print the type of max. So here I will get the type of this Python variable and let me run my code. And as you can see, it prints out class main dot dog. So here it's telling me that the class, the type of max is actually a dog. All right. So now you know the difference between a class and an object. We can create as many objects as we want. So we can go ahead and say, let's just clear this. We can say Goldie is also equal to a dog. And then Scout is also equal to a dog. Now, all of these are individual dogs, but at the end of the day, if we were to classify them as a species, they would all be considered dogs. So their class, all three of these dogs, their class is dog. So all three are instances of the dog class. You can apply the same example if you think of the individual person. So person is a class. We are all people. And then I'm an instance of the person class and you are an instance of the person class. So us as people, we all have an age, we all have a height, we all have a weight, we all have an eye color. These are all properties of the person. So class. we said that classes can have both attributes and functions. Before we get into that, I want to talk about a special function in classes called the init function. So if you've seen code for a Python class, you've probably seen this. So def init and then self. 
This is how this looks like. The init function is a special function for all Python classes. The way this works is that when you create an instance of this class, such as here where I created an instance of the dog class that I named Max, when you create this instance, this init function will be executed immediately. So for example, let's add some dummy code into this. So I'm just going to print dog was created. So when I create an instance of the class dog, this should print out dog was created immediately. Now let's actually run our code and see what we get. As you can see, dog was created was printed three different times. Why? Because when I first called it here, when I first created this instance here, dog, the init function was immediately executed and it printed out dog was created. When I called this a second time, immediately this printed out dog was created. A third time, same thing. So anytime we create an instance of this dog class, this init function will be executed. In our case, we just printed something out. Now, usually the init function, which by the way, we call a constructor, which is the one that gets launched as soon as you create this instance of the class, this is usually used to set the values of the class attributes. So for example, any dog should have the attribute breed. Any dog has a breed and we should specify this for any dog we create. So to do this here after self, and we'll talk about what self does in just a second, we're just going to say breed. And now inside of the init function, what we do is we just say self dot breed equals breed. And now you may be confused because why, what does this mean? What does this code do? All right, let's break it down. Firstly, when you say here in the init function that you want breed as a parameter for this function, as you know, in Python, all functions can take a certain input. Now, when the init functions take an input, basically here, you're supplying the value of this attribute. So here I'm saying, that I take the breed from whatever we supply in the code and I set self.breed to be this value. So here, let's just clear these. So here, when I create max, now rather than just say dog, I need to supply a value for breed. So here I would say uh, golden retriever. So now I have supplied the value for breed when I created this instance of the dog class. So now I can go ahead and do this. I'm going to print max.breed. So this is going to get me the breed of my dog max. So let's run it. And as you can see, okay, let me scroll down. As you can see, it says golden retriever. So the breed of max is golden retriever. How was this possible? How were we able to get this max.breed? This is possible using this self keyword right here. So self, what it does is that it points to this instance of the class. So basically I'm saying that when I supply my init function, when I give it the breed, set the breed of this dog to be the same value here. So anytime I create an instance such as this, so I say Goldie equal dog, and then here I specify Labrador, for example, Goldie.breed is going to be equal to the value Labrador. This is possible using the self keyword. So self basically tells your Python code that this instance of this class is going to take this value for the attribute. So now we have the dog Max. He is a he's from the class dog, but his breed is a golden retriever. And Goldie, on the other hand, is also a dog, but the breed is a Labrador. Let's add another attribute. So I'm just going to clear this. And I'm going to add a new attribute here, color. Now let me try to run this. So if I run it, as you can see, I get an error. It says init missing one required positional argument. Because here the arguments of init are breed, color. So you need to specify the color. I can't just say Max is a golden retriever. I need to specify a color. So to specify it, simply I just say here, I say blonde. Now rerunning it, as you can see, the code runs perfectly. There is no error. It does still print out the breed because we have it here, but that's really it. Now we printed out the breed. Let's print out the color. So I'm just going to print max.color. Now, after running it, as you can see, we get another error. This time it says dog object has no attribute color. So here you might stop and think, okay, why does it not have this color attribute? We have it right here, right? 
This is wrong. Here, color is an argument to the init function. So we supplied it here when we called the init function. However, I haven't saved this color anywhere. I basically just supplied it to my init, but then I didn't use it. You can see here it's kind of grayed out because it's not being used anywhere in the code. To actually set the color to be for max, to actually set this color as an attribute for the dog, you need to say self.color equals color. And now we have both the breed and the color. So if we rerun the code, you can see it prints out golden retriever and blonde. Now you can create as many instances of these dogs as you want. So I can create this dog Goldie, which is a Labrador with the color golden. I can create Scout, which is a Husky with the color gray. And now I've created three instances of the dog class, each having a different set of attributes. You can also set a default value. So for example here, I can give another argument which is going to be age, and here the default value is going to be 1, which means if the user doesn't supply here an age, we're just going to automatically assume that this dog is of age 1. So here I would say self.age equal age, so just like we did before. For example, I'm going to give max the age 10, but then I'm not going to specify anything for the two other dogs. So now if we run it, as you can see, it was executed with no error. Even though we didn't supply a value for the age here, because there is a default value, we do not get any errors because Python will automatically assume that these dogs have an age of one. I can even test it out to show you so I can print goldie.age. Even though we did not specify the age explicitly, here the age of Goldie is one by default because we already set a default value. All right, so we've spoken about attributes. Let's talk about class functions. So as we said, all dogs, they run, they sleep, they eat, they bark. All of them perform all of these different functions or all of these different methods. So here I can come inside my class and create a totally new function. And I'm going to call this function bark. And I'm going to give it here a set of parentheses. And this is my function it's going to print out bark. And because this is a class function, you need to specify self as an argument as well. This will allow you to execute the function from the instance. So if I don't specify self and I try to do max.bark and I run it, as you can see, I get an error. It says bark takes zero positional arguments, but one was given because automatically when you do this, you are giving the self argument. So you have to say self oops, self in order to be able to do this. So in order to call the variable dot bark. So anytime you need to call the function on an instance of this class, you need to use self in the function definition. All right, so now if we run max.bark, this should print out bark. Now running it, as you can see, it printed out bark. And you can do the same for the other dogs. So if I say goldie.bark and I run it, you can see that we have two different barks right now. Let's change things up a bit. Now, rather than just bark anytime I call this function, I'm going to say a self.breed has barked. Now, what does this mean? This means that when I call max.bark, this should run a self.breed. In this case, max is a golden retriever, has barked. So it would let us know the breed of the dog that has barked. So now let's run it again and see how this differs. It says a golden retriever has barked and a Labrador has barked. So now this class function produced different outputs based on the instance of the class. So now we have covered the basics of object oriented programming with Python. We've talked about classes, objects and the difference between them and how they correlate. We then talked about class attributes as well as class functions or methods and how these work with the object instances. This should give you all you need to start building these classes or to understand Python code that uses classes. In the next video, I'm going to cover the concept of inheritance, subclasses, superclasses, and how all of those things work. So stay tuned for that one. If you enjoyed this video, please do consider leaving a like and a comment if you did, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.